everybody, it's Penny Shelton here of PennyShelton.com and I have a true delight and treat for you today. I'm here with Miss Sarah Allen. She's my guest and we are going to be making your private label yeah. elderberry syrup. So give me a little bit of the backstory on this. My story actually begins in 2016. Uh, when I was diagnosed with chronic Lyme's disease when I was just 19 years old. I had been in increasing amounts of pain the last, I don't know, six months. And then something finally clicked of like, oh, there's something really wrong here. The doctor was like, well, it's chronic Lyme and you're going to be sick for the rest of your life. And this was a month before I was actually scheduled to move to New York. Uh, I had just gotten a job there and I also was going to pursue photography. So I decided to go ahead and move. I thought that I would have more access to doctors and I just got increasingly more sick. Uh, by the end of the year, I was so sick that I literally couldn't take care of myself anymore and would have to take really, really, really strong medication to just knock me out so that I could get some sleep and break mm. from the pain. And so it was at this breaking point that I met a very witchy woman named Becca, who I owe so much to. Becca had a farm out in Massachusetts that I got to visit a couple of times. This was my first ever exposure to holistic living. She, you know, picked all of her own vegetables and made her own medicine and lived very, very, very close to the earth. She gave me this elderberry syrup. When I first drank it, it hit my body and it was just like, it just felt like it exploded and something shifted and my body was like, what was that? That was, that was exactly what I needed. She taught me how to make it in a very ceremonial way. I'm so excited to be sharing with you guys now. And it's been a tradition of mine ever since then. And I love making it in the fall. It was such a gift to me that I see that's what its purpose is now. And so now I just want to share the medicine and share uh, something that really, really helped me transform my mind and body and soul. From there, it catalyzed me into looking at, you know, all of my undeveloped trauma and yeah, it had me start to listen to my body for the first time in my life. After years of pushing away pain, pushing away trauma, pushing away emotions and feelings, it was this medicine that first taught me how to listen. And from that, uh, I was able to completely heal myself of Lyme's disease the next year. By the end of 2017, I had actually never been more healthy in my life. It's like it woke you up. Exactly. I was asleep and it woke me up. Well, can we go into your <laughs> magical enchanted kitchen and make some? Yeah, let's Yay! do it. Okay. Here we are in Sarah's apothic kitchen <laughs> so you've already made some yeah so i already have a batch going for us so i can show you how i finish it the syrup is complete it's been preserved and so all we have to do right now is just sweeten it with some local honey first i'm gonna walk you through the ingredients because they're really really special you can get elderberries from two sources uh, my favorite that i like to use is this brand called mountain rose herbs they are an incredible, incredible, essentially online co-op uh, of completely certified, organic, non-GMO, sustainably harvested herbs. They are conscious about their harvesting techniques and also the quantities. And that is really, really, really important because as, as we continue in humanity, we are affecting not only the animal kingdom, but the plant kingdom. And so much of our sacred medicine is not being mindfully harvested and is facing extinction. Mm -hmm. This company in particular uh, does an amazing, amazing job of regulating what they put available and when and making sure that they're not taking too much. I have been 
ordering my elderberries for them for years. But this year, I actually got the opportunity to make syrup from locally harvested elderberries. My boyfriend's family actually is really into elderberries too, except they do jam and compote. They went and harvested 15 pounds of elderberries all over Muscogee Creek County. And so I've got the opportunity to make some syrup with locally harvested berries. So elderberries are really, really great for you for a couple of different reasons. They are really high in zinc, which is a huge boost to the immune system. When you combine it with Oregon grapefruit, yeah. Oregon grapefruit uh, is a lung tonic. And so the syrup that we're making today is all centered around helping the immune system and your lungs and throat, which is perfect for flu, perfect for mono, perfect for colds, and perfect for COVID. This is slippery elm root powder uh, that is also certified organic. I actually just got this from Natural Grocers. This is also a throat tonic. Hi, baby. <laughs> That's my kitten. I use sweet cinnamon chips to add spice and flavor to the syrup. And I like also getting that in bulk. Um, then mullein um, is an amazing, amazing plant that grows wild here. Look at that color. It feels like a lamb's ear. It's really soft and fuzzy and grows in these giant stalks uh, and then puts off these adorable yellow blossoms. It was I harvested leaves from one of my client's gardens. I do landscaping um, and he let me harvest a bunch of mullein leaves and then I dried them and then ground them up uh, to be used in this elderberry syrup. Also, if you've got like a sore throat, you can make mullein tea. That is so powerful. Like I was, I had a sore throat a couple weeks ago and it just like immediately zapped it. So you can grow it, uh, you can find it. I just love that I got it right out of a friend's garden. Mm -hmm. I also use fresh ginger, which you can get at the farmer's market, mm -hmm. or I actually got, how many pounds was it? I got two pounds of organic ginger at Sprouts. I just chop it up into small little chunks. And uh, you know, ginger is really, really great for inflammation, the gut, your immune system, energy boost, so many different benefits. Then we have started adding mushroom powder into the elderberry syrup. Uh, my favorite one is lion's mane. I don't know what it is about lion's mane, but when I started taking it, I felt a palpable change in my body. They call it the memory mushroom. And I think it be, it's because it is such a great boost for your brain and for all of the neural pathways in your body. And then we do reishi. Um, and reishi is, it's actually really great for your lungs and your throat and your immune system too. And so it was just kind of like meant to, <laughs> meant to go into the syrup. Then we sweeten it with local honey and then preserve it with brandy so that it keeps. This is like the best flavor of the elderberry syrup. It, so it gives it sort of like a, it brings out like the medicinal tincture feel to the syrup um, and it's delicious. What I usually do is you'll need a scale uh, when you make this as well as a big bowl and then a really, really big pot because um, it makes quite a bit. And also a side note, I always double the recipe because you know you want to share the goodness as well. I weigh out each of the ingredients and then um, put them in here. And then I think it's like you add 10 cups of water. If you have filtered water, great. If you don't, it's okay too. The recipe calls that you bring it up to a boil for at least an hour. I have found that the absolute best way to make it with like the best results is to actually let it cook overnight. Mm -hmm. Bring it up to a boil for a couple of hours, maybe an hour, and then turn it on low to just a barely a simmer, and then let it cook all throughout the night. And then in the morning, either cheesecloth 
or I have this bag that's actually used to make almond milk. You strain out all of the juice in another big pot. Um, so you, it would look like you just like pouring the pot into here. So you could take that nut milk bag and like put it down into like the carafe of a blender or something. Yeah. And then you pour everything into that and then you're gonna be squeezing out all of the all of the juice. You just want to make sure that you have a big enough container to take all of the syrup because um, it does make quite a bit. The remaining yep. herbs, yeah. So I actually compost it. Okay. Um, I've got a compost that I started uh, this year in my backyard. It's, it's my way of saying thank you to all of the plants that made these ingredients. And so I'm giving back their life that they have provided for me back into the earth, which feels really, really important because I want to honor that and I want to say thank you because the earth just gives so much to us. And so any way, any way I can, I can give back, I do. And that's why I give the syrup away. And that's why I also um, make sure that uh, it's created from a place of love and a place of mindfulness and that part of it goes back to the earth to feed new life. It's been strained, and then after I strained it, I went ahead and preserved it with the brandy. And so what we're gonna do is add uh, some honey. Uh, the recipe calls for two cups per batch. Uh, I double this recipe, um, but I'm not a fan of too, too, too sweet syrup. Mm -hmm. And so I like to start at two cups and then work my way up depending on how the flavor is. There is a recipe and there is specific amounts of each thing that goes in, but every time that I make this syrup, it is completely different from the last batch. And so there is an intuition. I feel like it's almost like the medicine is telling me how it wants to be made, actually, uh, that, I, that I really recommend listening to. And so if you want to put in like four tablespoons of mushrooms, but only like one tablespoon of Oregon grapefruit, go for it. Or whatever you're feeling called to, do it. Because I feel like what is created is what exactly is meant to be. What nutrients and what, what balances of, of the ingredients goes into this is, is, is exactly what's needed for the people that it's going to be shared and given to. So keep that in mind too. Love it. Yeah. Local honey. And then Becca taught me that when you stir the elderberry syrup, you pray over it too. And sending blessings to all of the people that are going to enjoy it and blessing the medicine blessing the plants that made the medicine, sending it light and love and gratitude and energies of, of healing and peace and uh, connectedness. We'll get a spoon and we can try this. Wow, that's completely different from anything that I've made before. Mm. Wow. Okay. Well, it's really bright, this one. It smells amazing. It smells like earth medicine. I love it. Um, That's amazing. I feel healed already. <laughs> <laughs> the other thing that I wanted to share about mushrooms, which um, I think just adds so much to this medicine, um, and this is all like my own scientific hypothesis, but there's a, there's a scientist in the 90s who discovered the underground mycelium network, uh, which is how trees communicate with each other. And she did this amazing experiment that showed that there is literally a mother tree of the forest that will send nutrients underground to saplings or trees in need. What this proved is that, you know, mushrooms really are the connectors of, of everything. 
And so when I consider that, I also consider that for our bodies. And why I feel like mushrooms specifically are so powerful is because like they connect the trees, I feel like they connect our neurons and our pathways and, and all of the systems within us. They also provide bridges and create connections that may have not been able to be accessed before because of a health condition or because of issues in the tissues. <laughs> I love, I love thinking that, you know, I just can eat a scoop of lion's mane and it's helping my body function at the level that it's actually supposed to. Once your, once your honey has melted into your syrup and you have uh, it at the flavor and the sweetness that you want, um, you'll need a funnel and to store it, it's best to do it in amber bottles because you don't want it to be exposed to sunlight. It'll keep in the refrigerator for months. I mean, it goes so quickly because mm -hmm. it's so delicious, but you know, up to like six months, yeah, you're good. I just scoop it right in and then pour it into the funnel here. Let's see if I can keep this holding it. Then you just fill it to the top, just like that. And you can get these bottles on Amazon for really cheap. And that's great because they have these little suction pieces. You can just close it really tightly and then store this in the refrigerator and let it cool down before, before drinking. So Sarah, this has been amazing to see you, you know, talk about all the ingredients. Uh, it's quite something to even just to bring everything together and to order everything. Now there's gonna be people watching this that might not want to go full in on that commitment of getting everything yeah. that you have. Um, are you open to selling your bottles? Absolutely. So this batch I made completely organic, except for the Mullen, even though it is organic, uh, to be able to sell and distribute to you wonderful people. For this size bottle, which I believe is eight ounces, maybe? I think that's an eight ounce. Um, I'm gonna sell it for $15 a bottle. And how you can order it is contact me directly through Facebook uh, at Sarah Elizabeth Allen is my full name. Or if you're on Instagram, you can follow me and message me at Sarah Wandering Wild, all one word. And then, you know, if you do email or text, you can always message me and we can switch to one of those if that's your preference too. I can ship them. Uh, I can, if you're in Tulsa, you know, you can come and pick them up for me at the farmer's market where I work with Penny on Saturdays. Um, but yeah, I'm absolutely happy to share this medicine. Honestly, $15 a bottle for everything that you have put in, not to mention your healing good intentions and your prayer over it, it's well worth $15. Thank you. I am more than happy to share with uh, a group of people who I, I feel like get it and I feel like understand it. Um, you guys are already on the path. You're here with Penny. It's my honor to, to be able to share the medicine. And just like the mushrooms, we'll stay connected. Have you ever had a stevia leaf before? No, not real. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> it's so sweet. And these are finally flowering and are about to put off their seeds. So Could you put that on a salad? Oh yeah. Stevia blooms. Uh-huh. Who knew? <laughs> Everything in my garden uh, has a medicinal purpose to it um, or a pollinator purpose. These are, these yellow ones are calendula, which is really great for inflammation. Lemon balm. Mmm, so good. This is Coreopsis. Um, wine cup. Bilardia. Yarrow. Echinacea or a cone flower, and more calendula. 
And these are all native to Oklahoma and are all pollinator flowers and they all have medicinal benefits. Uh, tea made with these flowers is really great for um, the menstrual cycle or women's issues, actually. Echinacea. Uh -huh. And then yarrow is commonly used to uh, heal cuts and wounds. It's really like, it, it just helps the wounds stay clean and not get infected, which is really cool. You can use the flower or the stem is a favorite for our local butterflies and bees. The red malabar, which is a Brazilian spinach, it's really thick but really delicious. We use it in smoothies and salads and in soups. Is it the malabar spinach that is has berries and is flowering? <laughs> I yeah. had no idea yeah, it's crazy. that it did that. More wildflowers. Look at that.